Hello, everybody. This is Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of uh, Playing Solo Jazz Piano, as well as Jazz Piano Fundamentals. That's actually how you pronounce it. Nobody knows. It's actually pronounced Fundamentals. Anyway, to uh, keep that, uh, that spirit going, uh, to, to introduce this video about a, a month, I don't know, six weeks ago, I put out a video about how to improvise and connect between changing modes. And I used the wind shorter tune Miyako to demonstrate. And it was not a particularly popular video. So what am I doing? I am doubling down on this unpopular subject matter. And I'm going to, you know, keep making incredibly unpopular videos. So I wanted to return to one element of what we can do in order to create a sense of continuity. So I named a few things that you could focus on. One was, for instance, finding common tones uh, between two very different modes. Another was, you know, keeping a single melody line going, like keeping a unidirectional melody line going or kind of connecting. And I gave the example of, you know, you could play Mary Had a Little Lamb and keep kind of the same pitch names going, like play an E, but instead of an E, an E flat when you get the drum. Um, I gave ideas about sequencing and transposing, but today I wanna to focus on one of the ideas that I threw out that I think we could explore more, which is guide tone lines. And guide tone lines can be defined a lot of different ways. A lot of people talk about guide tone lines, let's see if this works, within a two, five, one, and basically creating guide tone lines based on just Actually, you shouldn't see that paper yet. Based on just the third moving to the seventh, moving to the third, sorry, that was the seventh moving to the third, moving to the seventh, or as I was saying, the third moving to the seventh, moving to the third, right? That to me is like the most limited definition of guide tone lines. I'm going to use a more expansive definition of guide tone lines to mean any stepwise linear motion that's going to be able to connect between harmonies. Okay, and that will become clear, and I'm gonna show you some variations of these types of guide tone lines. So, now you can see this paper, and I chose these two chords, A minor and C minor, because they don't have a lot of notes in common necessarily, um, and they're from the uh, popular uh, tune Recordame. So, Maybe this will be useful. So what sorts of things can we do in order to connect between these two chords? A lot of improvisers, if they see these two chords, are going to play something on the A minor and then something different on the C minor, right? One, one. but that's gonna get limiting at a certain point. It's going to really lock in your phrasing. So one way that we can create continuity is by having a guide, it's hard to say guide to lines in other words, having a melody that kind of serves as the connector. So we could look for two prominent chord tones that maybe are just a whole step or half step apart. For instance, E is the fifth of A minor, and E flat is the third of C minor. So, And I've made some other videos where I propose that you practice guide tone lines on like a one through five scale, where one is playing the guide tone line exactly, and by five, you might not really hear the guide tone line. It's in your head, but you're obscuring it. So a one might just be... A two, maybe we're venturing a little further off. Three. Four. And then five. I want to do that again and while well, you can see what I'm playing. So one. further and 
further afield. Um, let's see, let's find another relationship where we would just have to go a step away. How about um, from B, the ninth of A minor, to B flat, the seventh of C minor? So now I'm going to improvise, and I'm really trying not to pick up my hand between these two um, chords, between these two different modes. So one nice thing about using these guide tone lines is that you can lead in to the note on the second chord. stays you know for instance maybe it occurred to you that c is the third of a minor and c is also the root of obviously c minor so you could use that as a connector to me it's a little bit harder to create something dynamic out of staying in the same place rather than moving right i mean dynamic by definition kind of has to do with movement You could kind of decide for yourself whether that's useful. Um, you could really stick close to it. You know, and use it almost as a pedal tone. Now, all of our guide tone lines so far have either stayed the same or gone down. And if you've studied traditional guide tone lines in a 2-5-1, you know that it's traditional that they stay the same or go down. Right? In circle of fifth harmony, notes are always descending. Okay. But as we're working through other scales, we could certainly make guide tone lines that go up, which gives us kind of lots of different options. So how about we try one going from F sharp, the 13th of A minor 7, to G, the 5th of the C minor 7. Very colorful. I really like that sound. Um, or, you know, we could take that same C that we had before, but make it go up to D instead of staying at C, right? D would be the ninth of C minor seven. To me, that has a different feeling than the downwards guy tone lines. So that's another opportunity. But wait, there's more, which is that we could make guide tone lines that aren't necessarily whole notes. Um, so I would focus on half notes, and this is going to give you kind of more direction, right? These, uh, these whole note guide tone lines are just single fence posts on either side of the yard, and you still have a lot of connecting to do. When you add in another fence post in between, your, your fence is going to start taking shape. I don't know if this metaphor makes any sense to you. It does in my brain. So we'll see. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to try to make everything move stepwise. So let's try, um, we're going to start on B, A, and then G, F. So now we're making a little melody, honestly, that is connecting by step. So ninth of A minor, root, fifth, and eleventh or fourth. Now let's try the same process with this more active guide tone line, okay? So we're gonna go one through five. 
First one's gonna stick really close to it for our number one. Okay, and notice there's already kind of a lot of music there when we stick close to it. So here's number two. Number three. Five. I'll try to make another version of five. So that really gives me quite a lot of direction. Um, let's see if I can come up with another one on the spot. How about starting on the fifth? I don't know why I'm writing them with all stems up, uh, but that's what's happening. So it's not very colorful to land on the root of the C minor 7, but let's see what happens. F sharp, G, A, from the fifth and the thirteenth of one chord to actually the fifth and the thirteenth of the other. That's kind of interesting, right? Because the chords are also moving up. Exactly clear. Um, okay, so I'm using that A flat as a little passing tone between the A and the G. Obviously, it's not a part of our A Dorian scale or most scales that you would use with an A minor seven. But because it's resolving down to that G, it's going to work, I think. So here we go. Okay, so there's kind of these like multiple levels of harmony going on, right? There's every single note, but then there's that guide tone line that creates tension and resolve. I think that's pretty cool. Um, let's try something more adventurous. Let's, let's really test this principle. Um, how about C to C sharp? to D. So that C sharp's a little bit more dissonant. I'm a little bit less comfortable like hanging out on it, but I think it still works. This is playing out or not it kind of depends how you think about playing out and exactly how you treat this but this is one way that you can stretch the harmony a little bit past saying okay this one scale goes with this one chord or even you know oh i'm going to use a little bit of a lower chromatic neighbor here we're still using these principles of uh tonal harmony but we're mixing between these very specific you know small form things and these larger form guide tone lines. All right, I think that's where we're gonna call it a day. We'll see if this video was more popular <laughs> than the last one. 
I don't really care. Uh, if you did enjoy this, probably actually Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 2 has a lot of interesting stuff about guy tone lines in there. That might be the one for you if you really like this video. Um, why don't you go ahead and say uh, popular if you've made it all the way to the end of this video. That'll be our secret word for the day. Thanks as always for watching and uh, happy practicing. I'll see you soon.